Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to share a fractal mirror effect, which will change this image to this. Pretty interesting, so let's get started. First thing I will do is to create a couple of rectangles to cover the image. I will use them in a second to divide the image into slices. As you notice, not all rectangles will have the same width. Once we have our rectangles, I will duplicate the image until I have the same amount of images as the rectangles. I will move the rectangles one by one to the duplicates and use them as clipping masks. Excellent! Before moving on, let me group them. I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to this group. By default in my settings, when I add a filter, Affinity makes the added filter a child of the selected layer. This is not what I want. I want it to apply to all the layers in the group, so I will move it to the top. Let's make sure the Preserve Alpha is selected and then increase the blur so we get a nice blurred image. I'm now going to distribute these blurred slices over the canvas and as I do this we already get a very cool effect. I can also align the original image to get a more pleasing look if needed. Also, we can still move the blurred slices around until we are happy. To give it a bit more contrast between the blurred slices and the original, I can add a curves adjustment just above the image and adjust the curves until we have a nice composition. In this case, I'm just going to increase the brightness. To make things more interesting, I'm also going to decrease the opacity of the blurred group, so we get this nice subtle see-through effect. However, by doing this, I also get this nasty grey areas at the side of the image, and this is due to the fact that the original image did not cover the complete canvas. To fix this, I'm going to duplicate the original image and stretch it so it will fit the canvas. Of course, I need to move it to the bottom to make sure it will not cover the original image. Nice! A little bit more fine tuning on the opacity of the blur group to get a more interesting look. We can also still move and resize the blurred slices to get this distorted look. That looks pretty cool to me. Okay. Let's try another look. Let me reset back to the starting position. I'm going to add rectangles again. However, this time I'm going to make sure that they will all have the same width. I will do this by drawing the first rectangle and then duplicating it until I cover the image. Probably the image will be over covered or in my case not covered completely. This is because I just started with a rectangle width. I can fix that by selecting all the rectangles and then resize them as a whole until it exactly covers the image. The next steps are the same as before. I will duplicate the image as needed and use the rectangles as clipping mask so I again get slices of the image, but this time all with the same width. Let me group them and duplicate this group. Perfect. I'm going to disable the group and add a Gaussian filter to the duplicate. Let's disable the duplicate and enable the first group. Now, let's distribute the slices from this first group over the canvas. I notice my canvas needs to grow a bit and I will use the crop tool to widen my canvas. They are now kind of evenly distributed. Now let me enable the second group. Remember, this is the group with the blur. I'm going to position the slices in this group so they will fill the empty places. 
As the gaps are not so wide as the slices, I can creatively position them to get that fractal distorted look. Nice! I can also start playing with the slices from the first group, making them a little bit smaller and moving them until I get something cool. To strengthen the fractal look, I will increase the blur. And just as before, let me add a curves adjustment just above the blurred slices group to increase the contrast between the sharp and the blurred slices. Pretty interesting. Optionally, to make it really cool, I will duplicate the original image and move it to the top. If I put its blend mode to screen, we get this amazing end result. I hope this video has given you some inspiration. You can take this effect further by adding separator lines between the slices. Or maybe instead of using a Gaussian blur, use another distort filter, like twist. Or you can even mirror the slices in various ways. Let your imagination go free. Thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to support my channel by subscribing and liking this video. Until next time.